In this video, we will be taking a look at web parts and discussing what they are and how they're useful to SharePoint site administrators. Um, what is a web part? Uh, by definition, a web part is a modular and reusable component that can be placed in any SharePoint services web page. What does that mean? Well, modular means that they're self-contained. So you could create, for example, a form uh, in SharePoint that was for collecting basic information about your users. Uh, then traditionally that would be made into a web application, meaning you'd have a single page with a single form that the user could then fill out. Turning that form into a web part then allows you to deploy that form throughout SharePoint. You can actually customize it to populate different lists. You can customize pretty much anything in the web part that you could customize in the application, meaning who receives the email when a form has been submitted, where the data goes, um, you know, custom fields, titles, things like that. Those can all actually be manageable and configurable in the custom properties of a web part. Um, so that's the modular and reusable. So modular is self-contained and reusable means that you can use them multiple times throughout the site in content and in context of the site. So looking over the basics, uh, placing a web part in SharePoint 2010 is very easy. Uh, in older versions of SharePoint, you had to have predefined zones, and those zones are still available and are known as web part zones. So by putting the page into editing mode, you can see here, I actually have several web part zones on this page. I have uh, one at the top that's uh, intended to uh, act as the department banner. Um, I have a right column web part zone, and I have two web part zones at the bottom. SharePoint 2010, I can also place my web parts in content, which is a huge advantage over previous versions of SharePoint. Uh, placement or insertion is very easy. I will attempt to insert one in my bottom left zone. So looking here, I have basically my full list of web parts available to me as a user on this site. Uh, one important thing to note just from uh, availability, you may, may see a web part available in one site and then not in another. That could be due to either your user level on that site or that web part may not have been deployed into that particular site uh, and that will be uh, determined by your top level site collection admins. Uh, basic categories, lists and libraries provide views to different information in SharePoint uh, that don't replicate the information. They basically just act as a viewing portal. Uh, basic forms uh, such as an HTML form or an InfoPath form, uh, with both of which require a little bit higher level of training. Um, we have some custom forms. Uh, this is a YouTube web part that allows you to display a YouTube video on your SharePoint page, which is not a default um, option in SharePoint. And probably the most usable and useful to most admins, and that would be the media and content category. Uh, there's a few others here. Uh, feel free to explore them. Uh, they do uh, many different things, but the other one I wanted to point out of importance is the closed web parts. If you're using a layout, for example, that has a web part zone and you change to a layout that does not have a web part zone, the web parts in that zone don't go away. They, don't, they aren't deleted. They're just closed. So if you have a a, a, that situation you can come to closed web parts and you can reapply those web parts. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll just do a basic content editor web part. And so I hit add and then I can see at the bottom I have now my content editor and it says click here to add new content. So I will add my content. And what's uh, unique about this is this is a web part zone now that I'm adding content in. Um, I could then save this page and it'll be just viewable for me and I can see once saved I literally just have content. Now for those with HTML experience uh, you can actually click into the content area and then up on the ribbon you can go to HTML and edit HTML source and you can see add my content and so here I could add some HTML just add some real basic HTML and maybe even an H2 tag which will be picked up um, by the style sheet and 
That looks good, so I'll hit OK. And you see here it's automatically pre-formatted. So obviously, you know, you would need a little bit of HTML, um, CSS understanding to build web parts in that way, but, it, uh, you know, content editor web parts, but it is, is a useful function. Um, additionally, there are web part options. So for any web part, you can click the context menu here and select edit web part. And you'll see up at the top now I have all the properties of this content editor. Now content editor web parts are great because you can put in custom content such as I showed you and you can actually put in HTML. Or let's say that you have a section of content that exists in a document library, in a Word file, or in a, a text file. You can actually link to that text file and display that text. And the benefit there is if you may have an admin who does not have access to edit this page, but you want them to be able to change that content. So you can actually give them right access to that text file, and then any changes they made will actually appear directly on the page. Uh, the appearance layout and advanced are basically universal to almost all web parts, so we'll, we'll come back to those in a second. Um, and I'll show you placing a content, a web part in content is just as easy. Uh, so from here I'm going to insert, and from my insert list, which I have pictures, videos, everything you would typically have for a content page, I also have web part. So I click web part, and here we see I have my same categories, and I'm going to once again use a content editor uh, just because it's uh, very easy to access and use. And so as you see here, it's actually placed and filled the frame of my content area completely my custom web part content like so save my page and there it is now typically you wouldn't necessarily put a uh, content editor web part in a content zone but you might uh, a good reason would be for advanced users for example you can place javascript in a content editor web part and it will render safely you cannot put it in a content of page content, uh, it'll actually throw an error in SharePoint for basically detecting a script attack. Um, so this is one way. If you did, for example, have a Wufoo form or several, some of the third-party plugin that you were trying to show in a content zone, so a page content zone, you could do that with a content editor web part and not in the actual content zone itself. Um, so going over the basic layout features. I seem to have accidentally closed my web part. Not a problem. I can just go back and insert web part. I should see it on my closed. I'll add it here. Here we go. My custom content. It's all good. So I go back to edit web part. Okay, so appearance, layout, and advanced. Those are the three basic sections. So from here, uh, one of the most important um, areas is to understand what the Chrome is. The Chrome of a web part is the title here. It's the it's the the border. It's it's the pieces of the web part that you don't necessarily want to see. Um, so the Chrome default for a content area in the page is to actually show the title. So for example, if I go here and change this to my web part and apply that. And hit OK. Oh, I seem to have lost it again. Hmm. For some reason, I'm losing my web part at the top of the page. So I will switch to this one. Not really sure what happened there. I'll try that again. My web part. Hit OK. And there we go. So we have my web part. So that's one way to change the title. Um, the Chrome state also, you can choose to not display Chrome. Um, so to not display the Chrome would mean that you basically, once, you're not going to notice a big difference here, but now once I save this page, I'm no longer going to see the Chrome around my custom web part. Uh, you know, to go back in, I go into edit mode, the Chrome will appear, but the Chrome appears so that you can access the editing menu. Uh, there's several other things you can do with appearance as far as dictating a height and a width in pixels, um, and you can actually do it in points, because you can do it in print measurements, but I don't recommend it. Um, 
you can choose if you display Chrome whether the Chrome is in a minimized state or whether it's normal um, and then from layout you have some advanced left to right right to left uh, this will change a little bit based on where you place it so if you place for example let me show you a web part in a web part zone as opposed to a content area you'll see a little bit more here see so now I can choose actually I can move this to a different web part zone without actually changing it on the page hit OK so now I see my title my content editor web part up here so yeah, that's yeah, some stuff you can do with layout and then under advance this really has to do the the most things you'll deal with here is if you're working specifically on a team site that that has a lot of access to it a lot of users are accessing it um, or a publication page that does you can choose whether or not people can do certain things such as if I don't allow minimize or close or hide um, you know I can basically take away all of these and when I go to apply now you'll notice that those buttons are no longer available <coughs> on this menu I can still delete it and I can delete it because I'm an admin and um, there's a couple other things uh, you know description which like most things in, in SharePoint are uh, notes to other admins of how to use this uh, and then there's some custom uh, title and and uh, not very frequently used sections below in advanced uh, so uh, one other area that you'll see in web parts uh, I'm actually going to drop in our YouTube web part into the top area just so you can see it Try that one more time. There we go. I my refresh caused two, so I'll delete one of them. So you can see right now this is automatically wired up to a um, a YouTube video. Uh, it's currently getting the warning because it's uh, I'm on the secure line and it's coming from YouTube, which is not secure. If I hit edit web part. I'll just ignore that area. So you see below here now, below, below advanced, here's all of my custom properties for this web part. So these will be very different and, and not, you know, will be very dependent on the specific um, um, web part that you placed on the page. So for example, to get rid of that warning, I'm going to change this to HTTPS, which is just accessing the exact same video, but it's doing so over a secure connection so that's just an example of a small thing you can do with this you can also um, change the YouTube properties the video ID uh, the a playlist you can change autoplay so I'm gonna do that so that means next time I do this I shouldn't immediately see that video start again you know and so these are just some examples of custom web parts uh, the custom web parts are completely designed de defined by the developer uh, who created the web part and uh, will be very different from from video from web part to web part um, so that kind of gives you a basic overview of web parts how diverse they can be um, and really if you have an idea of something that you are trying to do in SharePoint and it doesn't seem like it's possible with the existing web tools uh, and, and web part set uh, you know you should reach out to communications and marketing uh, to see if there's a solution that can either be brought into SharePoint or developed for SharePoint.